let's just say, hypothetically for a moment, it happened. As all the witnesses stated, it happened. How big of a story do you think that is? It's an is? immense story because it means that they're real. If it's true, that it means they're real. It means something that we d don't understand was in the sky, got hit by lightning, got caught up in a, a furious lightning storm, and wound up crashing. And that these things survived and they got out. And the fact that one guy handled one of them and got this in insane infection and died very quickly afterwards. And he was very young and healthy, military man. And the fact that all these people have the same story. They all have the same uh, depiction of the disc, the, the craft. They have the same depictions of seeing these beings. Not one witness came to us. We had to track down every one of those witnesses, and there's a story behind each and every one of them that I could go on for an hour for. I'm sure. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice you to be, say. wouldn't bore me, bro. <laughs> we got a gravity bomb over there. We could be here for days. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'd be like... I know, <laughs> but there's but, nothing that goes better than it, marijuana it, and aliens. It, when I went, every time I'd get back from Brazil, I'd get home and people, and I'm out there for a month knocking on doors, talking to witnesses, chasing people down, trying to convince them to come forward like crazy. Yeah, this is not like a, a, a quick venture no, to make this documentary. 12 years. That's insane. And so, wow. and so I'd come home from a trip in Brazil, and I'm telling you, man, it was like my mind was just torqued. I was so, I'm in another alternate reality. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm coming to the realization that this fucking happened. When right? that man takes you to the spot yeah. and he gets overwhelmed with yeah. emotion. He was gone for 25 years. Marco Leal. Thank you, Marco. And, and co. If, I said to Marco, that guy, we don't have a story. We got to find, we got to find Carlos de Souza. Yeah. Unless that guy is a Daniel Day-Lewis quality actor. We don't need Brad Pitt anymore, nor Leonardo DiCaprio. This guy. That guy, if he's full of shit. Best actor. Of he's the, one of the best actors ever. Because that moment when he gets to that spot and he's overwhelmed with emotion, he starts tearing up. And, oh, yeah. And he's freaking out. Like, just imagine if 25 years ago you experienced something that literally destroyed your understanding of life itself in the universe. That there's a thing out there that can visit us that's different than us. And it's probably been here forever. <laughs> My DP, David West, has been f uh, shooting for over 40 years, and he's like, I've never seen anything like that. That guy was, that's about as legit as I've ever seen. The it guy was, was so believable. Crying, and I mean, not only that, but it's like the guy disappeared. He's never made a dime off this. He gave one statement 26 years ago to a guy named Claudio Covo. Claudio Covo was a, an engineer, and he was a researcher, UFO researcher in Brazil. Thank you, may you rest in peace, Claudio Covo. And there was a guy named Uberajara Rodriguez, he was a, a prominent lawyer. He's also investigated the case. We wouldn't know about this case if it hadn't been for a handful of dogged Brazilian UFO researchers. Pekka Chini deserves credit. Uh, this guy named um, uh, Marco Petit, um, AJ Javard. How uh, these big guys. Is Virginia is. Virginia is one hundred fifty thousand. I think it's about like one hundred thirty thousand. I think. So it's like Boulder, Colorado size. Yeah, and, uh, and the surrounding areas. But you know, I, I. I was going to include like maybe like a like I did with Rua in the phenomenon. I was going to include like five or ten minutes of that case in the and I just I worked so hard for so long with so many people, and then I just deleted the whole thing out of the out of the film. And I was like, oh God, Marco's going to kill me when he sees this. That I just didn't include any of it because I just couldn't squeeze it in, and right. there was too much. It was just too much. Well, I'm glad you did it that way, honestly, because moment of contact is it's it. it it's really good. There's a few of these documentaries that I go, God, I shut them off and I go, oh, if yeah. that's real, holy shit. Imagine being those people. Imagine being these people in this small city of 150,000 people and then something happens and a fucking UFO crashes in a field and people witness it. And everyone is just stuck there. Then the military shuts the town down. Can you see this? Yes. This is... Brigadier Jose Carlos Pereira of the Brazilian Air Force, okay? I met with him, with Marco, on two occasions. The second occasion was 2000... Can you that camera? Might be I'm so better, sorry. Right? Would it be better this is Jose, that camera? Jose... Yeah. No? Worse. Worse? Yeah. Okay. This is Focus. Jose, you yeah. can look him up, Jose Carlos Pereira, Brigadier, Brazilian Air Force, okay? So Marco and I met with him twice. The second time was 2013. He gave us an interview, some of it's in the film. 
And uh, he said, like, I'll talk about the 1986 UFOs over Brazil. I'll talk about the Colares case that happened in the 70s. Phenomenal photographic evidence that's out there. You asked me about Virginia, and this interview is terminated. Whoa. It's like, what? What do you mean terminated? Like, really? So anyway, we do the interview, and I was like, well, I'm not going to ask him, I guess. But when the camera stopped rolling, I was like, please. I mean, Marco and I were begging and pleading with this guy. And I remember looked him dead square in the eyes. I said, I, I swear on my life, there are no recording devices. There are no you know, cameras rolling. Please tell us about Virginia. Why did you have that reaction to Virginia? Marco was too. We were begging him. I was practically licking this guy's boots and he's getting prepared to leave and he's got a driver waiting for him outside. So we were following and pleading with him all the way out there. Please just tell us, please. I swear on my life this happened. He gets in the car, doors open. He looks up and I'm only reason why I'm telling you this because he died. He looks up at Marco and I and he goes, it happened. Closed the door and off he went. 